Hi, my name is John, and I'm one of the pastors here on staff at Puget Sound Foursquare Church, and I have the privilege and honor of being your host today. If you haven't heard it in a while, welcome home. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope that this service encourages and blesses you today. Hey, before we get started, I want to remind you that we have a lot of content ahead, so make sure you stay tuned. As we get started today, Pastor Laura and the Sound Worship Team will be leading us in a couple of songs. Would you pray with me as we get started today? Holy Spirit, we invite your presence to come and invade our hearts and our home, our space, God. We want more of you, Jesus. And I pray as we go before you in a time of worship, God, may we be able to exalt you. Be with Pastor Laura and the worship team as they lead us in a time of worship. We love you, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray.
Jesus did for us on the cross. Jesus, thank you for setting an example for how we are to live. Thank you for giving us your spirit. Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would show us how you would have us to walk in this season and in this time. We trust you. We take a hold of what you are saying to us. We rise up with courage and with a confident assurance, God, that you will perfect what you have begun in us.
What do you guys think of the new song? I've been listening to Champion constantly and it's been an amazing, amazing song. What else has been a favorite worship song for you lately? Let me and let the community know down below. If worship encouraged you at all today, would you do me a favor and like the post? And would you share this service to your timeline as well? You never know, this service may be the exact thing that someone in your community is looking for. A lot of you are checking out our page and our social media, and we love that, but you're not following us. What are you guys waiting for? Make sure you guys smash that follow like button and stay connected with everything that is happening here at Puget Sound Foursquare Church. Hey, before we go any further, I'd like to welcome Pastor Kari and Pastor Heather as they fill you in with what's happening in our church as a whole. Hello church, Pastor Kari here. It is always so good to be together for church at home. Hey, we're getting a lot of questions about when do we get to be together again and reopen our doors. We are excited that our church is able to meet in groups of 50 during phase two. Now, the timing of that is a little bit unknown right now as we're waiting for more directives on our government, but also as Pastor Lance is consulting a special group, a council from within our church of two doctors and a judge who are helping us determine the best and safest way for us to reopen our doors. Now we want to tell you that when we know, you will know. So continue to pray
pray with us so that God would give us wisdom in reopening our church. In the meantime, we want to hear from you. We have a Back to Church survey out today. It may be in your inbox. You can find it in, on our social media platforms or on the website. Please, if you are a part of this church, we want to hear from you. There is a wide range on the spectrum of emotions, concerns, and excitement about walking back into the church doors, and we want to take the temperature of our church. If you have been with us for 20 years, 30 years, or if you've only been with us just since we've launched this online campus, please let us know how you're feeling. We want to hear from you. Now, maybe in your household, you have two people that feel different ways. You both can fill out the survey. It's anonymous, but please do that because we're only going to have it for a couple of days. Jump on that so that we can hear from you. Now, when you are on the Church Center app, make sure that you sign up. If you are married, sign up for the married study. There's limited space. It is a Zoom study. And right now, it's a weird time to be married. Am I right? We are hanging out with our spouses way more than normal. And sometimes that can cause stress that needs to be addressed. And in other ways, it can really re reinvigorate the relationship. If you, No matter where you're at in your marriage, this Zoom study is a place for you to connect with other marrieds, to really learn about ways that you can be strengthening your relationship. And it's all virtual, so you don't even have to leave your house. Go to Church Center today and sign up for that. Now, while you are there or while you are on PugetSoundForsquare.com, don't forget to give. We really believe at Puget Sound Foursquare that giving is not about the money. God does not need your money. It is about trust. It is a spiritual exercise to be able to trust God with all that you have and give him worship in the process. He is so worth it, church. We are hearing testimonies of God fulfilling places that people never thought that they would see fulfilled in this time where it shouldn't be so good, but it's because of the grace of God and the power of God on families. Give in this time, not just so that you would receive, but to give worship to the King who deserves it. I love you, church. Hi, kids. Pastor Heather here. Welcome to Kids Corner. I hope that you had the chance to watch last week's video about how a young David received the call to become a king. If you didn't have a chance, just tell your parents to find the email that I sent them and click on the link. This week's story is called The Young Hero and the Terrible Giant. And again, we will see David partnering with God to do what seems impossible. Did you know that when God makes a plan, even if it seems like it won't work and you are willing to partner with him, that plan will always succeed? Because God wants to see all things for your good and for his glory. Sometimes God asks us to be really brave and that can be really scary. Can you think of a time where you've had to be brave? Let your family know what that is. Just take a minute to do that really quick. Okay, kids, remember, God is with you and he has made each of you strong and courageous. To connect with me or with your teachers teaching the lesson, you can visit the kids page on our website. Can't wait to see you guys hopefully really soon. Have a great Sunday. Bye-bye. All right, church, now is the time. Get comfy, get cozy, grab a cup of coffee, whatever you need, as our lead pastor, Pastor Lance Powers, delivers the word of God here. If you're excited, give me a I'm ready in all caps. Did you guys respond? Are you guys ready? All right, here's Pastor Lance. Hey, good morning, church. Pastor Lance here, Puget Sound Foursquare Church. So glad to have you here. Uh, let me say to you, if you're here for the first time or the first time in a long time, welcome home. Welcome home. It's so great to have you with us. Hey, I want to share something with you this morning that's on my heart. In fact, I would go so far as to say my heart uh, feels broken. Last week, I felt compelled, compelled to call our church to a time of 24 hours of prayer and fasting. And I want to tell you, uh, it was an amazing time. In fact, some of you heard some amazing words from the Lord, and I've been receiving texts and emails of all of that stuff. And In fact, if you heard something from the Lord, would you email that into our church? I'm trying to compile some of that stuff. But one of our staff members asked me if we could move the prayer and fasting time to last Thursday. And it just seemed uh, pretty passionate within her heart. And so I said, sure, we can move it to Thursday. And today, today I know why. Hmm. Last week, the murder of George Floyd felt all too familiar. 
subsequent protests and deaths of our black brothers and sisters all over the nation has been nothing less than devastating. Hmm. The acts of violence are not new. In fact, they existed long before our nation began. Many of us are seeing some of this stuff for the first time, though, because it's being filmed. I want to be clear to you. Understand something. I do not think racism is a political thing. I think racism is a demonic thing. If we get caught up in the social media and all that goes on, then we're going to miss the point of the biggest issue that's going on in our nation today. The point of so many in their lives are feeling marginalized, scrutinized, and even terrorized. Understand something. Reconciliation was a ministry of Jesus. In fact, so much of the New Testament was about racial reconciliation. I don't know if you realize that. In fact, most of the Jews spent all of their time trying to combat Jesus in some of his Jewish ideas and hearts cry for every tongue, nation, and tribe to come together when, when the, the Jews were fighting for their own issues. I'm telling you, I believe that God's calling a church today to a similar place where we will finally come under one covering and begin to find the peace. Listen, I do not think racism is a yesterday issue at all. I think racism is a today issue. Something that we need to be praying about. Something that we need to be seeking the heart of Jesus for. And may we do that as a church. Before we go on into the message I believe God put on my heart for you today, will you join me as we pray? Father, thank you for an opportunity to come together as a church. Lord, we, we are so in need of your grace as we navigate these waters that are so heavy. Lord, I pray for our nation. I pray for our city. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters who have felt terrorized and marginalized and scrutinized. God, that we would learn to love like you love. And see like you see. We need you, God, more than ever. Bring healing to this nation. And restoration to your church. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you. This morning, hey, listen, I wanted to take just a few minutes and draw your attention to what I'm going to call a state of the church, a semi-annual state of the church address. What I mean by that is, Tomorrow, today is May 31st, tomorrow we step into June 1st when we really hit the sixth, the, the sixth month of the year. We started our theme launch back in January of, the, of 2020 and we're, we're moving in. Now is our sixth month year. I kind of wanted to take just a, a, half, annual, a half year, semi-annual look at where God has our church today, where we're at today, and kind of take a look at what that's going on. Listen, I want to tell you... Uh, how our church is doing as the people of our church are. I can tell you this today. I have not seen as much love, care, and generosity ever, ever in my life throughout the church today. I am so blessed. It's amazing to me to hear and see all the testimonies of people. We were one of the first churches that I know of that immediately heard we were going to have a stay-at-home order and turned into a bunch of small groups of people meeting in one same church with our church at home groups. In, in fact, by the way, if you're not connected to a church at home leader, will you email our church so that we can get you connected? Uh, we'll find room for you. I'm telling you, I'm excited about that. You know this, if you've been with us for any length of time, that we have a mission at our church, that our church's mission is simple. It's one thing, literally, to send loved, amended, and trained people out. That's our mission, to really equip you, to heal you, to then send you out into the world that's desperately in need of the love that God's placed within your heart. So many of you loved, cared, and gave at the beginning of this, this COVID-19 moment when we were all stuck in our homes uh, to the tune of over $12,000 given in gifts to gas cards and grocery cards, and it's amazing. And it's given to your neighbors and so many. It's amazing. And by the way, Pastor Chad, our missions pastor, even was able to procure two semi-loads of food that we've been packing in boxes and handing out. I think we're up to over 350 boxes now. And by the way, if you are in need of some of that resource, let me, I'm going to do this correctly. Go to PugetSoundForsquare.com and locate the drop-down menu, and you'll find one that says, Give Help, Find Help. Go ahead and click on that and apply for um, the need that you have. And by the way, if you can help, we still have some food to pack into boxes, and we would love to have you come be a part of that. Also click there, and you can find out how to give help to sorting up those boxes and handing them out. It's amazing, as our church continued to move on, we had so many people 
give things to our church that have, or were amazing. We had our parking lot restriped by a, a couple that was amazing. I'm going to honor their anonymity, but they paid for professional striping, restriping and re-signing of our parking lot. It's amazing. We also have another couple who's in the process of remodeling our church bathrooms, our main bathrooms. In fact, uh, as we're in the process of remodeling, they decided to take on their own shoulders the, re- uh, the, the purchasing of commercial toilets. Hallelujah. Right? That's what we got brand new commercial toilets. And so we thank you to you, couple. You know who you are. Excited about that. We, it, it's amazing to me. I could go on and on. But, but for the sake of today and the time, we open your Bibles to the book of Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. I want to give you a state of where I believe the church is today. If you've been reading along in our, our, our weekly reading, the Lexio Divina Journal, you'll see on our website, Mark chapter 4 was a couple of days ago. And uh, it really came clear to me, even in a Bible study that I lead, that we talked a little bit more about this. Here's what it says in Mark 4, 35. It says, As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross over to the other side of the lake. He was already in a boat, so they started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm arose. High High waves began to break into the boat until it was nearly full of water. Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Frantically, they woke him up, shouting, Teacher, don't you even care that we're going to drown? When he woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the water, Quiet down. Suddenly, the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. And he asked them, Why are you so afraid? Do you still not have faith in me? And they were filled with awe among themselves. Who is this man that even the wind and the waves obey him? Boy, little did we know that January 2020, that we would be walking into a global pandemic. How about that? Literally, that every human on the planet would be impacted by something like this. Get this, nearly every church, not just in America, but around the world, had its physical doors closed. Hmm. It's amazing. Little did we know that in addition, that our nation, our nation right here would be ravaged by a racial divide that manifests itself in horrific violence. Hmm. It's amazing. In February uh, in February 2nd, actually 2020, just right after January, I spoke a message entitled 40 to 41. <laughs> 40 to 41. You might ask, what in the world does that have to do with anything? 40 to 41. Our theme for this year was fully alive, and our church celebrated its 41st birthday. We were heading into our 41st year of life as a church. It was exciting. It's amazing to me as I look about that because I read in the Bible that 40 has something pretty significant. Did you know that 40 was spoken of in the Bible over 157 times? It's amazing to me. That in the Bible, the the number 40 was was really announced as a measure of completeness or a finish of an initiation, right? Or a start of something new. Let me give you a couple examples. The number 40 shows up in the Bible when Noah climbed into the ark and it rained for 40 days. Moses lived 40 years in Egypt, then 40 years later in the desert, then another 40 years after he left them out of slavery for another 40 years. Moses sent spies for 40 days into the promised land. Goliath mocked Israel for 40 days till a small shepherd boy showed up with some smooth stones. Jesus was tempted for 40 days in the desert, then he appeared to his disciples 40 days after his resurrection. Listen to this. The number 40 marked a moment in time A time of initiation, a time of completion, listen to this, and a time of promotion. Hmm. Listen to this. Noah climbed into the ark. It rained for 40 days. But after the flood subsided, the real work began. Death, disorientation, disorder. Could you imagine after all that time in the ark, after the whole world was flooded, a global catastrophe, could you imagine the death, the carnage, the... The, the, the carcasses that were all now rotting and stinking, dinosaurs and wild animals. It's cr- humans, I mean, I'm telling you, it was a hor- horrible thing. It was then that the work began on the 41st. <laughs> Listen to this. Goliath taunted and mocked Israel for 40 days until David showed up. But Listen to this. After killing Goliath, the real battle started because it was then that Israel chased the Philistines on the 41st day. Jesus was tempted for 40 days in the desert. Then he stepped into his biggest battle on his 41st day when he began to take on the ministry that God had called him to for three and a half years. 
Jesus also appeared to his disciples 40 days after his resurrection. Listen to this. On Easter Sunday, after the music stopped playing and the tears stopped the flow, and you know what happened? It was then that the work of starting the church began. Hmm. I want you to write this down. It's always after the victory, always after the breakthrough, always after the initiation that the real heavy lifting begins. You know, you lose some weight, and then you have the, the job of keeping it off, right? You get a fight with your spouse, you apologize, you say, I'm so sorry, I'm such a dummy, and you try to figure it out. Now you have the job of walking out what you said humility would bring you to. You passed that difficult test in school, and now you've got to keep it up. The heavy lifting always comes after the win. The heavy lifting always comes after the win. Listen to this. I want to give you our, our state of the church address right now. We're entering into our sixth month of our 41st year. <laughs> heavy lifting is already underway. The heavy lifting has already begun. Woohoo! <laughs> Praise Him. Yay. Right? I, don't, I don't hear the shouts. Right? I'm telling you right now, right? The, the heavy lifting has already begun. You can feel it. You can see it. You can experience the heavy lifting, right? Can I tell you that it's not for nothing? I'm telling you, I believe with all my heart that this 41st year, God is bringing us to a place of complete maturity and wholeness. We might have won after the 40th year, but it was in the 41st year that the work starts. Hmm. Let's go back to our Mark passage, Mark 4. Mark 4 says this in verse 35. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side. Man, as I read this, I, I feel like I got stuck on every word, but let me just try to get through some of this. It says, as evening came, as evening came. For many, this COVID-19, this racial divide in our country right now has been described by, as, as, as nothing less than a very, very dark night. I can tell you that right now. By the way, when the lights are dim in your house, and the, 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 the darkness closes in on you, you know, that's, that's when the coat rack starts to look like a monster, right? That's when the coat rack starts to grow fangs and things start to get terrifying, right? That's when it starts to get a little dark outside. And I'm telling you, that, you know what, I, you know what we need right now? We need somebody to turn the lights on. That's what we need in our, in our world today. We need someone to bring some lights in the midst of this darkness. That's what we need. In fact, it's interesting. The crazy truth here in this passage was this. Jesus was asleep in the back of the boat in the middle of the storm. Some of you today think that Jesus is just taking a nap. Some of you are experiencing the darkest night of your soul. You feel like Jesus doesn't care. Matthew 5, 14 says this. <laughs> you are the light of the world. City on a mountain, glowing in the night for all to see don't hide your light under a basket. Instead, put it on a stand and let it shine for all. You know, I want this passage in Matthew to say, I want this passage in Matthew to say, Jesus is the light of the world. <laughs> it says that over in John. But here in Matthew, you know what it says? It says that you and I are the light of the world. That's what it says. It says that we are the ones empowered and filled. Listen to this. How can you be the light of the world and Jesus be the light of the world? Good question. Let me give you an answer. Jesus has filled you with his spirit to be the light of the world. Now live like it. Jesus has filled us with his spirit to live in this dark world so that we can light it up. There is a dark world right now. It's in complete chaos. It's in need of hope. It's in need of the light of Jesus. <laughs> if we don't start to become the light that he made us, then we'll always be missing out on the answer that he already gave us. If we don't start to become the light that he made us to be, then we'll always be missing out on the answer that he already gave us. Hmm. Let's go on. Mark, Mark 4.36 says this. <clears throat> Jesus was already in the boat, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. Not an insignificant point. Verse 37, But soon a fierce storm arose, the high wind and the waves broke into the boat until it was nearly full of water. Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Frantically, they woke him up. Teacher, don't you even care that we're going to drown? When he woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet down. Suddenly, the wind stopped. There was a great calm. 
And he asked them, why are you so afraid? Do you still not have any faith in me? Hmm. Love here. It says that the high wind and the waves broke into the boat. It says that they were, the boat was full of the water. You know, it's amazing to me at how long they took to cry out to Jesus. <laughs> I think it's so amazing to me at how long they took to finally, the boat was almost submerged. <laughs> it was almost underwater before they finally realized, hey, we should go wake him up. Now, I always wonder, like, why they took so long? Why didn't they just jump in and just say, hey, we got to get to Jesus? Like after the first raindrops started to fall. Hmm. It's amazing. I feel like sometimes this story shows me that the boat is the church in the middle of the storm. And so many of us as the church are, have been so navel focused on our own self and our own well-being that we, we can't see the other boats that are trailing behind us. We're so consumed and transfixed on our own stuff that we can't see that there are other boats in the water. Jesus calmed the storm not just for them. He calmed the storm for them all. But you know what Jesus waited for? He waited for the light of the world to stand up and cry out to him. Here's my question, church. When are we going to stand up and be the light of the world and cry out to him so that the rest of the storm can stop? Hmm. Storms pose a couple of things in our life. The purpose of a storm in our life is twofold, to expose and to distort. A storm exposes for us for who we really are, our fears, our faith, our control issues. A storm also distorts the truth of the things all around us. It distorts us. It, it tries to tell us that the, the view of the problem is bigger than it really is. It distorts our view of ourselves and makes us think that we can actually do it without Jesus. And it's easily, the, the storm actually distorts the view of Jesus. It, it makes us think that he doesn't actually care. Jesus, do not even care that we're perishing? Of course he cares. Let me ask you this. What has this recent storm been surfacing in your life? What has this thing been bringing to the surface in your life? What's this, what is it exposing? Fear? Is it exposing a, a distorted view of God? I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. It said Jesus has his head on a cushion. I've said this before, but it bears repeating. The, the cushion in the Bible is important. Understand something. The cushion in the, it's not an insignificant thing that the, 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 the cushion was there. I get this picture in my mind of Peter having a boat and saying, hey, Jesus, why don't you hop in my boat and get back there to the back and be on the cushion and, and enjoy yourself. <laughs> I just imagine Peter saying, just go ahead and relax. I got this, right? And how often we do the same thing with Jesus. I'll just do this without you because I think I can. <laughs> Peter gets out there with the guys in the boat. The storm gets going a little crazy, and Jesus is asleep with his head on a cushion in the back of the boat. It's interesting that the, direct art the, the, the definitive article the, defin uh, the definite article, the, shows up here in the Greek, which means it was a specific cushion. It wasn't just a cushion, it was the cushion. In fact, the Greek tells us that it was the captain's cushion. It was where the captain sat. In other words, when we look into the Bible, we can actually extrapolate the truth out of it that says this, that this was the seat of authority in the boat. In other words, the captain in the boat has complete authority, no question. It's amazing to me that Jesus was at complete rest in his place of authority in the middle of a storm, and they waited until the boat was almost, almost full of water. Hmm. I, I've been hearing a phrase from the Lord over the last several, um, I don't know how long, but over just last season, the word I keep hearing the Lord say is the word hard reset. I don't know, many of you have your phones. You, you know what I'm talking about. A soft reset is when, you know, you can't get the signal and everything gets a little crazy, so you just shut your phone off and restart it. A hard reset, however, is when you, when you shut the thing down and you have to push certain keys and you've got to actually look it up because you'll ruin your phone. It literally erases all the data, and a hard reset brings your phone back to its uh, factory settings. I keep hearing the Lord say that to the church today, that he wants to do a hard reset. I feel like there's something God wants to do in our church today that's going to bring us back to our factory settings and it's going to take a, a, a global pandemic before we finally shake off the rust and run back to Jesus and say, wake up, I need you. And get back to the original factory settings that say, I cannot do this on my own. I cannot do this on my own. I think God wants to bring us back to the place where we will fulfill his greatest commandment. Matthew twenty two thirty six says this, Teacher, which is the most important commandment of the law of Moses? Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second, listen to this, the second is equally important. That's important you understand that. The second, he's about to say with the second law that's equally important to the first one, which is to love God. Here's what he says. Love your neighbor 
as yourself. All the other commandments depend on the prophets. And all the other commandments and the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. God wants us to love him and love each other. But we can't do it without him. Listen, I don't know where you are today with your walk with Jesus, but if you need him, you need to cry out to him. Say, Jesus, I need you. I surrender my life to you today. I give you all my stuff and fill me with your spirit. Go ahead, just do that this morning. It's important that you do that. Listen, there's so much ahead that I know God's calling us to as a church. I have such excitement about the future. Everything inside me that I hear from the Lord, I just want to stand here for hours and tell you. And we will in time. You'll hear more about it. But I know God has a plan and a purpose. And we are at a moment, a, such a time as this moment. God brought you here and entrusted you with this message. So let's get out and love on people. Will you join me as we pray? Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your amazing grace. We love you. Help us today to trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, isn't God so good? If you guys were blessed by the word, type hallelujah in the comment section down below. Come on, we're waiting. We're going to see the hallelujahs, and the people in the community are going to see that, and they're going to respond. They're going to like it as well. Church, I want to remind you on two questions before we depart. Whether it be self-reflection or whether it be in your Zoom groups, would you be intentional with, these, with reflecting on these questions today? The first question is, what did God speak to you in the message this week? Come on, think about it. What did God speak to you in the message this week? And the second question is, what are you going to do about it? Church, before we go, I just want to remind you that there are many ways to stay connected. You can access all of our information at our website at www.pugetsoundfoursquare.com. You can download the Church Center app on your mobile device, or you can follow our socials on Facebook or Instagram, at Sound Foursquare. Hey, church, we love you. Take care and have an amazing week.